chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again we shall now study more concepts related to the congruency of triangles for this we shall prove certain common facts and see how we develop our skills on reasoning with the help of mathematics this whole thing may not be directly useful to you in an exam but these concepts if done this way they do help us develop good reasoning skills which come to our help at certain points in our exams so the whole point is to appreciate and understand the use of mathematics geometry for developing our reasoning skills let us see how do we do that prove that the angle bisector of an angle of an isosceles triangle is also perpendicular of the opposite side the question should be is also the perpendicular bisector of the opposite side also prove that angles opposite to equal sides of an isosceles triangle are equal so we have to prove two facts for an isosceles triangle let us draw an isosceles triangle so that we can prove our facts the whole point which i see in this is that this helps us develop our reasoning abilities let us suppose abc is an isosceles triangle the side ab is equal to side ac and the angle bisector of an angle let us take the angle bisector of angle a let it pass through this point d on bc so let abc b the isosceles triangle with ab is equal to ac and let ad be the angle bisector be the angle bisector at a so this angle will be exactly equal to this angle because this angle a is bisected into two equal parts by the angle bisector ad angle bisector now we have to prove that this d is the midpoint of bc and also prove that this angle is 90 degrees this fact is what is to be proved now i am removing this so that this doesn't cause confusion because it has to be proved so let us see how we can do this we can observe in triangle abd and triangle adc in triangle abd and triangle adc what do we observe ab is equal to ac ac it is given to us because the triangle has been given to us as isosceles triangle and we have now also angle bad equal to angle dac because ad is angle bisector of angle a 
So this angle and this angle they are equal because of this. And another thing is that AD is equal to AD because it is the common side to both the triangles. So what do we have? This is side, this is the included angle and this is the another side. So this side, this angle and this side. Two sides and their included angle are respectively equal. So by SAS congruency triangle ABD ABD is exactly congruent to triangle ADC. This is one conclusion that we have now immediately reached. So with this fact in hand, let us now observe about this one. Now if these are congruent, then their respective sides will have to be equal. This side will therefore have to be equal to this side because this one is equal to this. This is already common and this side will therefore have to be equal to this side. So, BD has to be equal to DC. This is one thing we have proved that D is the midpoint of BC. So, this proves one thing. Secondly, this angle has to be equal to this angle. So, this angle has to be equal to this angle. We can say X has to be equal to also angle X has to be equal to angle Y which implies X and Y both should be 90 degrees. If they will be 90-90 then only the entire will be 180 degrees. So, we have now proved that this line AD is perpendicular to BC and D is the midpoint of BC. So, AD is the perpendicular bisector of BC. So, this is what we wanted to prove. Angle bisector of an angle of an associates triangle is also the perpendicular bisector of the opposite side. So, this is what we have proved. Now, let us attend to this one. Also prove that angles opposite to equal sides of an isosceles triangle are equal. Okay, this is equal side and this is another equal side. Angle opposite to this side is this theta and angle opposite to this th side is theta. And since this triangle is congruent to this triangle, angle theta has to be equal which is again proved because of congruency. So, we have used the congruency of two triangles to also prove that the angles opposite to equal sides of an isosceles triangle are equal. To summarize this for practical use, let me erase the board. If this is an isosceles triangle, for your exams you can remember, if this is an isosceles triangle, then this angle will always be equal to this angle. We have known this from childhood and today we have proved it also. And the angle bisector of this angle will be the perpendicular bisector of the opposite side or we can also say that the perpendicular bisector of one side will be the angle bisector of the opposite angle one and the same thing. This property you should remember for an isosceles triangle. Let us move to our next part now. Prove that if three sides of one triangle are equal to the three sides of another, then the two triangles are congruent. So effectively what he means to say is that if we have one triangle, let us say ABC 
and if we have another triangle D E F and if this side is equal to this side, this side is equal to this side and this side is equal to this side, then both the triangles are congruent. This is an obvious fact that if we place these two triangles over one another, they will completely cover each other. This is an obvious fact but the interesting thing is that it can be proved also beyond doubt. This is the most interesting part of the whole story. That you need not accept it as a God-given fact. We can definitely prove it on the basis of our existing knowledge. The proof is definitely of interest to us because it has a lot of reasoning involved and that is what is the more interesting thing in the whole case now. Let us try to prove this. For this what we will do is, we will pick this triangle and place it over this triangle. So I will write E here. This E vertex will come to overlap with B. F vertex will come to overlap with C. This, this vertex will enter this line will entirely overlap this line because the length of this is known to be equal to this length. So this is guaranteed that BC will entirely cover EF. But what is not guaranteed is whether A will also cover D or not. Let us do one thing. Let us suppose that A and D they do not cover each other. Let us suppose the contrary. I am not writing all the steps because explaining it is more better intuitive here. So let us suppose B and C they are covering each other because they will and let us suppose that D doesn't lie on A. Although it is not possible we know from practical but we will try to prove our theorem by saying that Suppose A and D do not lie on each other. So let us join A and D by a straight line. So this is a straight line that we say now. It joins A and D together. Now we have been given that AB is equal to BD. ED rather this one. This edge ED has been given equal to AB. So this tick can be placed here. Likewise the edge DF, this DF has been given equal to the edge AC. So we can place two ticks on this also. Obviously we know that such a thing never happens. We are just assuming the contrary we will ultimately lead to a contradiction and then we will say back that because of this contradiction A and D cannot be separate. This is the basics or basis of our logic that we are trying to reach to that point. So what I have done so far is B A is equal to B D that tick marked and C A is equal to F D this is tick marked and A and D are supposed assumed that they do not lie on each other. Then this situation would be there. Now I am showing you this is an isosceles triangle. This one. Triangle ABD is isosceles. So I will join, I will draw an angle bisector at this point to, to move to the opposite side. So the angle bisector will go like this. Let us suppose it touches it at X. So at vertex B, I have drawn an angle bisector and it will pass through certain point X which will be the center of this AD. This is what should be there. We have just now proved that angle bisector of angle B will 
pass through the midpoint of AD and will also be perpendicular to perpendicular to AD. Likewise, let us draw the angle bisector of C. This angle bisector will also have to pass through X which is the midpoint of AD. Let us draw it also. Here goes the angle bisector and it also passes through X. There is absolutely no problem two lines can pass through the same point but this angle too will have to be 90 degrees. This means that at this point we are able to draw true per two perpendiculars this and this that is this line is also making a 90 degree angle and this line is also making a 90 degree angle and both the lines are different lines because B and C are different points they will lead to two different lines. So two different lines two different perpendiculars to a given line cannot pass through the same point. This is a known geometrical fact. Suppose this is one line and we have one perpendicular here, another perpendicular here, no problem. Two different perpendiculars to a line are possible. But two different perpendiculars cannot be perpendicular at the same point of the line because this is going to make this angle much greater than 180 degrees. 90 for this, 90 for this and some for this space also. So this basic contradiction leads us to prove that A and D cannot be separate. And if A and D cannot be separate, then ABC has to be congruent to triangle DEF. So I hope you understand how we have proved this fact of triple S congruency rule. Reasoning skills developed through geometry, they definitely make a difference between two candidates, between two candidates who are appearing for an exam. Let us move to our next part now. Here is another interesting proof that will help us prove that if two sides of a triangle are unequal, the angle opposite to the longer side is greater. This is a fairly obvious fact that we all know but proving it is even more interesting. Okay, this is a triangle ABC. First of all, I'll put the statement here. What is the statement? Prove that if two sides are unequal. Now this AB is not equal to AC. So let us write let AC be longer than AB. So this is let AC be longer than AB. The angle opposite to the longer side is greater. So this angle, let us call this entire angle as alpha. And what is the angle opposite to AB? This beta. So we have to prove that, prove that alpha will be more than beta. Of course, it is a day to day fact. If this side is longer, then it will open this angle greater. So it will stretch this angle greater. It is a day to day obvious fact, but we can prove it also. So let us see how we can prove what artifice we use. In this case, we will, we have now been given that AC is greater than AB. Therefore, we can always find a point AD D on this line such that such that AB and AD are equal. We can always find a point D. So I would say 
take a point D, take a point D on AC such that such that AD is cut equal to AB. This is possible because AC is longer and we can always take a point on it so as to make this and this equal. Let us now take this angle as theta and let this angle be also theta. They will be theta because angles opposite to equal sides are equal. This is an isosceles triangle and this angle, this side is equal to this side. So this angle theta should be equal to this theta. We approved it just now. So we'll write since triangle ABD is isosceles Since triangle ABD is isosceles, we should have angle the angles theta should be equal. So this is one thing. Let us now place our reasoning further. Now we know that theta is this theta is the exterior angle of this is the exterior angle of this. So if I just mark this angle as let us say I mark it by anything like uh, let me put it gamma any anything you could use I am used to alpha beta gamma so I put it that way. So theta is the exterior angle theta should be equal to gamma plus beta this should be there which implies theta should be more than beta this angle should be more than beta because if you add something to be to beta then you get theta so which implies theta is greater than beta if theta is greater than beta if this theta is greater than beta then obviously this entire alpha will be even more greater than beta because theta is cut out of this by drawing a joining to this point so alpha will be even more than beta so alpha will be more than beta therefore if AC is longer than AB then alpha will be more than beta is now proved let us take our next part now Prove that sides opposite to equal angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. This you can even attempt yourself. You can take it as an exercise also. We can obviously take this ABC as our isosceles triangle. This being equal to this. So construct, construct AD as an angle bisector. No, uh, sides are equal. So this is not given. This is not given. This is given to us. We have to prove that AB is equal to AC. Just I'll write in a moment. Construct AD as an angle bisector of angle A to meet BC in D. So this is our construction. Now we do not know whether D will be the midpoint because this AB is not given equal to AC. But we are sure that this angle is equal to this angle. We can just tick them. So we have been given that ABC is isosceles with angle B equal to angle C to prove AB is equal to AC. We have to now do reverse engineering. We know that B is equal to C. We have to go the other way round. Had AB been given equal to AC, 
then we would have been dead sure that d is the midpoint and so but in this case it is not possible to assertively say that so now let us observe our triangle abd and adc triangle abd is congruent to triangle adc why first of all this angle 1 is equal to angle 2 I am writing here angle 1 is equal to angle 2 bisection this one second angle B is equal to angle C is given and third AD is common AD is common so by angle angle side or angle side angle rule we can see either way this angle will have to be equal to this angle because this is equal and this is equal the third pair must be equal because the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 therefore this side will obvious this angle will obviously be equal to this so you can say angle side and this angle by this angle side angle rule the triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ADC if these are two congruent so AB has to be equal to AC has to equal AC which proves the story the trick is to just draw an angle bisector in case of an isosceles triangle this angle bisector will create two congruent triangles for us then if the sides are given equal we can come back to angles are equal if angles are given equal we can come back to sides are equal so this is a good artifice in case of an isosceles triangle let us move to our next part now in an isosceles triangle ABC with AB equal to AC this is an isosceles triangle that we can draw as a b c with a b equal to a c tick them d and e are points on b c such that b e is equal to c d so we can take this and these are two points d and e you could have taken e this side and that way uh, there's no specification there D and E are points on BC such that BE is equal to this BE is equal to this CD. So if I were to draw it like this, this part is equal to this part. Show that AD is equal to A. Let us first of all mark what is at least available to us this is an isosceles triangle so this angle will have to be equal to this angle so this angle is equal to this angle this side is equal to this side and abc is an isosceles triangle and this story has been given equal to this so we have to prove that this length is equal to this length ad is equal to ae this looks very complicated but it is not so let me take this ABE triangle separately so you will be able to see what I am trying to say this this is A B and E this triangle mini triangle has been taken out just observation nothing else I am putting the ticks correctly there and the question mark also I am bringing here and you also take out this triangle ADC A, D followed by C and this and this and this is the question mark and another thing also BE has been given equal to DC so I'll put two ticks here also so obviously I think anybody can see that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ADC 
The reason I am telling is BE is DC given. That is already a given fact. Angle B is equal to angle C is also given to us because the triangles are isosceles. AB equal to AC is also given. So by side angle side rule these two triangles are congruent. Now you can just see that this is just a flipped version of this triangle nothing else. But flipping doesn't mean that they won't be congruent. If you flip this it will become something like this. A, C, D, this double tick stays, question mark moves here, this comes here and this angle comes here. So now they will look more congruent, this one is this, this is this, this is this. Therefore, the third pair of sides should be equal. So third pair of sides. should be equal. Which proves the whole thing. You could otherwise also say that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. One side one angle that story. This triangle is congruent to this triangle. Congruency. So the side opposite to this ticked angle this question mark will be equal to the side opposite to this ticked angle which also leads us to the same thing without drawing a flipped version of this triangle. In either case we can prove that AD is equal to AE on the basis of the congruency of this triangle and of this triangle. So this is side, this is angle, this is angle. Let us take our next part now. ABC is an isosceles triangle in which AB is equal to AC. Let us draw our isosceles triangle ABC in which AB is equal to AC. I am ticking the mark here and also simultaneously ticking these angles because for isosceles triangle I understand that the angles will also be equal. Side BA is produced to D such that BA is produced to D. Let us first of all produce this side such that AD is equal to AB. So we will tick this also. How much is the angle BC? BCD. So we will have to join this also and we have to find out the value of this angle X. Seems interesting. ABC is a iso this this small is an isosceles triangle. This side being equal to this. This is produced to D so that this becomes equal to this. And then this is joined. We have to find out the value of this angle X. Let this angle or this smaller angle be alpha. So needless to say that this will be also alpha because alpha and alpha are the isosceles triangle angles of the isosceles triangle. And similarly this triangle is also isosceles. So if this angle is beta then this angle will also be beta. So this is alpha alpha and this is beta beta. This is isosceles. Now let us look at the bigger picture in triangle in the bigger triangle. Alpha plus alpha plus beta because this whole story plus this beta the sum of this and this alpha plus beta is this angle alpha plus beta which is same as almost x so I can just write it as x separately and this will be beta. This whole story should be equal to 180 degrees. Now I can combine this alpha and alpha. It becomes 2 alpha. This beta and beta it becomes 2 beta which is equal to 180 which implies 2 into alpha plus beta is equal to 180 
which implies alpha plus beta is equal to 180 by 2 equal to 90 degrees and which also implies x being equal to alpha plus beta will be equal to 90 degrees as well. This is what we actually wanted to find out how much is the angle BCD, BCD which we wrote as x or alpha plus beta therefore answer is 90 degrees. We will close it right now in our next lecture we will take up more on the congruency of triangles. This all is going to help us develop our reasoning and logical skills. Thank you.